undergoing a psychiatric evaluation at a mental hospital in Palm Beach since Friday. So is this Zachary Cruz? Oh, no. What's Zachary Cruz going to do? Is he going to be just like his brother? So uh, Nicholas thinks that she's stealing his inheritance, which it looks like that to me, too. And um, Zachary Cruz, what he needs to do is he needs to emancipate himself as soon as possible. He's 17. That's nearly 18. She doesn't have their best interest in mind. She's throwing him into the mental ward. There's no, she, you know, just hold him and give him a hug and talk through him through the night. But uh, he's not blood-related to Nick. Sure, he's going to be fond of Nick, but, you know, they're not blood-related. I don't just feel like when people would talk about Zachary, Zachary was the good one. He was, uh, you know, Nick was the one that was weird and he was a little off, but Zachary was, he was chill. Zach was cool. had Nick Cruz a little bit of his background. So he was born September 24th, 1998. He's 19 years of age. So I was born in 82. He, I am 16 years older, at least 16, 17 years older than Nick Cruz. So he's born in Margate, Florida. His uh, biological parents ditch him. We have no idea where they're at. The birth uh, he was adopted at birth. So as soon as the mother gives birth, he is handed off to the adoptive parents. So I bet you they may have known his mother. Where his father was, I don't know. His biological parents are nowhere to be found. So the media, they don't really tell the whole story. You know, why was he expelled? What was the exact reason? So Roger Cruz, Linda Cruz are his new birth parents. Right now, they're both dead too. So he's going to lose two sets of parents say that I uh, can't feel sorry for him after that. So that's fine. Let's talk about the child, okay? So Nicholas Cruz, the child, not the big, strong, you know, not the, not big, strong, but not the adult man, right? The big, the man who is going to be held to account for all of his, uh, for his crimes. He's a boy, right? He's small, he's scrawny, but he's 19, so he's an adult. But why is he, anyways, so September uh, 24th, 1998, he's 19 years of age, born in Margate, Florida. He grew up in Parkland, not far from the school with his adoptive parents. So Parkland, that's essentially his whole life. Now, Zachary, he is not biologically related to Nick. Now, that's his brother, who's two years younger, or he was adopted two years later. So I think he's two years younger. He's 17 years of age. 1998 is when Nick Cruz is born and given up and adopted by his new parents. And then 2000 is when Zachary Cruz is adopted. He's only two years old. He wouldn't remember any of this. He and Zach essentially grew up as 2001. Cruz was diagnosed as developmentally delayed. So 2001 at age three. This is, you know, the September 11th is going to happen in 2001. This, this is when Nick Cruz is diagnosed as de developmentally de 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 delayed. So I don't know exactly. I've heard autistic. I've heard he was on psycho, you know, whatever substances. So they're popping, him, you know, him full pills. And I'm not to sure exactly. I've heard ADHD and some other things. So he's, you know, develop developmentally <laughs> Development issues, either physical or mental. He's got some development issues at age three. Well, I don't know. He looks a little off. Everybody says he looks off. Essentially, he looks like Alfred E. Newman. He looks like that, you know, alfalfa. And alfalfa had an Alfred E. Newman. They have very particular, distinctive faces. It, it, Alfred E. Newman has, it's, you know, caca. His face is actually uh, lopsided. But they, you know, it's like not really pretty, but it's like, I don't know, like a dark ginger. So I, uh, if he is, if there's any part of him that was a part of the white race, and uh, if I have any power over this, I kick him out of the white race. He is no longer, 
a member of the white race. He clearly has more than just a few drops of, you know, it, there's a Greek to it. There's a darkness to him, right? There's a brown, there's, he's got a drop. So according to the one drop rule, he's out. Established, uh, whoever is guilty, uh, we will treat with that situation then, and uh, they will be removed. Well, Mr. President, you are implying then that the CIA in Nicaragua is directing the Contras there. I'd also like to, to ask whether having the CIA investigate its own manual in such a sensitive area uh, is not sort of like sending the, the fox into the chicken coop a second time. I he is five years old, just before his sixth birthday, August 2004, Nick Cruz is going to see his adopted father, Roger Cruz, die of a heart attack. He watched it. He witnessed it. And he died at 67, which is a young 67. At 76 is the average lifespan, so he still had nine more years to live. Roger Cruz, who worked in advertising and sales. He died August 2004 of heart failure. So death of a salesman right in front of his one son at least, Nick Cruz watched Nick Cruz or Nick Cruz watched Roger Cruz die. And then he's going to watch Linda Cruz die also. So he's going to see both of his parents die right in front of him. And then when Roger Cruz, this is when he's only five years old. So he's a child, right? I don't know if Linda got remarried. Or if I'm afraid I misspoke when I said uh, a CIA head in Nicaragua. There's not someone there directing all of this activity. Uh, there are, as you know, CIA men, a men stationed in uh, other countries in the world and certainly in Central America. And so it was uh, a man down there in that area that this was delivered to. And he recognized that uh, what was in that manual was direct contravention of my own executive order in December of 1981. I don't know if there, she got remarried or if there's a stepfather. Was she just raising those boys by herself? So at five, you know, that's 2003, the Iraq War. So that's when he has been without a father since 2003. That would be for 15 years. So he, not just his childhood, not just his, you know, uh, young adult years, but he didn't have a father from five six, seven, eight, the entire time he was in public education. He didn't even go to school by the time he was going to school. So essentially, the American public education was his father. It was the only strong institution that he had. So 2005, Linda Cruz valued the estate of Roger as worth more than $1 million, according to probate records. She later filed a medical malpractice suit against the doctor at a clinic over his treatment before his death. So she's going to win a loss. This manual, several thousands of which were produced, was distributed ordering political assassinations, hiring of criminals, and other forms of terrorism. Some of it was excised, but the part dealing with political terrorism was continued. How can this happen? How can something this serious occur in an administration and have a president of the United States in a situation like this say he didn't know? A president must know these things. I don't know which is worse, not knowing or knowing and not stopping it. And what about the mining of the harbors in Nicaragua? Which 2008, Linda Cruz finally reaches a settlement. And as part of the lawsuit, a court-appointed attorney, Ad Lidham, was appointed to gauge Nicholas and Zachary's share of the settlement. So he had died. He was the father, the mother, and the children are, you know, given a piece of that inheritance. So she files the medical malpractice suit. She gets some more money. The estate's already worth $1 million. And then part of the recommendation for the settlement was to just give the children the entire amount of $175,000 to be kept in an annuity until they were adults. So I guess in some fund that's it's making, generating its own money. So that's 2008. That's 10 years ago. So they put this $175,000 into an annuity. And it's worth $800,000 now, today. So it was to be kept in annuity until they were adults. Which violated international law. This has hurt this country and a president supposed to command. Mr. President, your rebuttal. Yes, I have so many things there to respond to. I'm going to pick out something you said earlier. 
You've been all over the country repeating something that I will admit the press has also been repeating, that I believed that nuclear missiles could be fired and then called back. I never ever conceived of such a thing. I never said any such thing in a discussion of our strategic arms negotiations. I said that submarines carrying missiles and... H5, Nicholas Cruz watches his father died. He's essentially the oldest male in the house, right? He's five. His little brother is three. And then there's Linda Cruz. And unless I, I'm missing a part of the story, those are the only three that are in this household. So Linda Cruz is raising her two little boys from the time he was five, 2003, 2004, 2005, right? From elementary school to middle school to high school. So for uh, five years old to 19 for 13 years. Linda Cruz is going to, you know, essentially guide Nicholas and Zachary for 13 years. That's most of their conscious life was with Linda Cruz. After uh, Linda Cruz had died last year, November 1st, and that's when the coyotes smelled the blood and the bloodhound media vultures, the system, the machine, they all began to circle. The system. Airplanes carrying missiles were more conventional type weapons, not as destabilizing as the land-based missiles, and that they were also weapons that, or carriers that... The Cruz is going to die from flu-related pneumonia last November 2017, just three months ago, four months ago. So Linda Cruz, she dies at 67 years of age, I think the same age that he did, a young... You know, they're elderly, but 76 is the average lifespan, at least for men, she at least had... 9, 10, 11, 12 more years to go, and a flu. Could you imagine? In America, dying of flu-related pneumonia. The flu is typical, right? You get the flu, you stay home, then you're better, right? Isn't that just how it works? People actually die of this, and they're dying at alarming rates. 4,000 Americans, a 9-11's worth of Americans are dying of flu, and the flu-related pneumonia, H3N2 is a particular shitty strand, and hundreds have been dying, and this isn't even peak flu season. We're coming up to peak flu. Being that particular thing, which is absolutely false, how anyone could think that any sane person would believe you could call back a nuclear missile. She dies of a flu-related pneumonia. Last November, people say, oh, she had health care. She was 67. And that when Social Security kicks in, are you sure she had health insurance? How do you know? Did she save any of it up? Did she have health care? People assume because they got health insurance that everybody, I don't have health care. So not everybody has health care. Now, in America, Linda Cruz is going to die of a common flu. The system will get their pound of flesh. That's the reason why they didn't want to take care of her. That's the reason why we don't want universal health care. That's the reason why we don't have paid sick leave. We force the students and we force workers to go out into the public arena, even when they should be at home sleeping for not just themselves, for all of us. But the system wants to pound of flesh. It's the whole point of the thing, isn't it? Money, fame, legacy, life, death, success, failure. And I think that perhaps uh, we established a little better understanding. I think that in dealing with the Soviet Union, one has to be realistic. I know that Mr. Mondale in the past has made statements as if they were just people like ourselves and if we were kind and good and did something nice, they would re uh, respond accordingly. And the result was unilateral disarmament. It's been a pretty tumultuous, you know, life, but it's going to be a pretty tumultuous couple of months. Linda Cruz is dead now. Now they have no parents, nobody, no biological parents, no adoptive parents, nobody. But... Hold on, wait a second. You're actually going to have a friend of the family, Roxanne Deschamps. Good old Roxanne Deschamps loves, just lo adored uh, Linda. Absolutely adored Linda. And she was named as the person to take care of them until adulthood. So Nicholas Cruz is 19. He's actually an adult already. 19 years of age. And then Zachary Cruz is 17. But Nicholas Cruz has the mind of a child. How did we, you know, if, is it because he was de developmentally, whatever, he couldn't develop? <laughs> he couldn't say, I can't say develop, but because he was, was disabled. Not, and I made it plain to them, we're not. But 
This, uh, there's been no change in my attitude at all. I just thought when I came into office it was time that there was some realistic talk uh, to and about the Soviet Union. It's like, you know, this Roxanne DeChamps is going to step up, and she's, gonna, she's already got two boys of her own. She knows what she's dealing with here. So she loved Linda Cruz, Nicholas Cruz, and Zachary needs some guidance in this world. So Roxanne DeChamps steps up. You know, because she loved Linda Cruz so much. Yes, I will see that your sons get to the next step. I will see that your sons will fly from the nest. You know, they have a million dollars in the bank. I'm sure this Roxanne DeChamps is going to get them that money so they can get their own apartment and to help them get their own job, to set them up to be uh, independent. Right? I'm sure that's what she's... No, okay, actually, she is still taking care of Zachary the 17-year-old, the minor, but she just threw him into the mental ward, and then before she threw him into the mental ward, she filed to take that million dollars away from both of them after Nicholas Cruz. Neighbors here in America uh, are vital to us. Uh, we're working right now and trying to be of help in uh, uh, Southern Africa with regard to the independence of Namibia and the removal of the Cuban surrogates, the thousands of them, from uh, Angola. So I can say there are a great many interests. I believe that we have a great interest in the Pacific Basin. That is... 17-year-old Zachary still lives with 42-year-old Roxanne Deschamps at her home in Lake Worth, Florida, and he's undergoing psychiatric evaluation at a mental hospital in Palm Beach since Friday. So she, uh, this just happened after the shooting. So she files for the money. She throws the brother into a mental institute. Now, three months ago, she had taken them both into her house, but they got into a fight. So she said, wait a second, you're going to bring those, gu no, you're not going to come into this house with, you know, those guns. You're going to bring those guns in here to, the, you know, stay here or either the guns or get out. And uh, either you go or the guns go. And he said, well, I'm taking the guns with me, right? So that uh, makes it seem like it's my house, my rules, you know. So she probably was real proud of herself. Ha! I told him to get out, and then he left. I'm so, did she make sure that where he was going, did he have a place to go? Did she? You have often described the Soviet Union as a powerful, evil empire intent on world domination. But this year, you have said, and I quote, if they want to keep their Mickey Mouse system, that's okay with me. Which is it, Mr. President? Do you want to contain them within their present borders and perhaps try to reestablish detente or what goes for detente? Or do you really want to roll back their empire? I have said on a number of occasions exactly what I believe about the Soviet Union. I retract nothing that I have said. His property, it is her house. So I can kind of see both sides of this. The part I don't understand is when she steals $3,000 away from him. So she kicks him out of her trailer. So she's living in this little, you know, shanty trailer. And then he goes from one trailer to another trailer. And, you know, I don't know if you've ever lived with anybody else. And even though it's nice that people open their doors up, you feel a burden. And you don't really feel like you have much of a say-so, you know. So it's nice what they're doing. But was he in a better spot? He didn't like this option, you know, trailer number one. He went to trailer number two and clearly didn't like trailer number two either. Now, the, before he goes, before he leaves, she steals $2,900 away from him. Well, that's a deposit and the first month's rent. If she truly cared about this young man, she could have put him into an apartment and set him up to be independent. But I bet you she wanted that money. She heard I believe that many of the things they have done are evil in any concept of morality that we have. But I also recognize that as the two great superpowers in the world, we have to live with each other. And I told Mr. Gramico, we don't like their system, they don't like ours. And we're not gonna change their system, and they sure better not try to change ours. But between us, we can either destroy the world or we can save it. And I suggested that certainly it was to their common interest, along with ours, to avoid a conflict and to attempt to save the world and remove the nuclear weapons. You know, if you've ever been in a, it's essentially, you know, it's a weird mixed thing. So uh, the whole point, if he had nothing, what the second trailer was doing was absolutely right. You have nothing, you got to start at the bottom, right? You got to go get your GED for whatever reason so you don't 
GED has a stigma to it too. So even if people who get their GED, I mean, I guess they could go to college and go on to other things, but the GED, it's, you know, there's a stigma. You didn't actually graduate if you got the GED. And then he's working at the dollar store, minimum wage, right? In Florida, what's minimum wage there? Seven bucks? So he started at the very, you know, very bottom. But if he has all this money that's tied up, he's got a million dollars waiting for him in the bank. How can nobody give a shit? How about it, nobody give him good financial advice or legal advice and say, you know, why don't you just set yourself up? She kicks him out, right? Okay, it's her house. She can do what she wants with the gun thing. But she stole $3,000 away from him. Why? He's only in there for two months. So the mother dies November 1st. November 1st, 2017 is when Linda Cruz, 78 or 68, my bad, but still young, 68, you know, it's still 10 years too young for her at least 10 years too young. So both boys moved in with the Shamps after their adoptive mother, Linda Cruz, 68, died from pneumonia in November, but Cruz moved out in January. So he's in there for two months. You can't say, what, $3,000 is for rent? No, you can't make that up for water, for electric? No, that's bullshit. She stole that money. She stole that money because that's all she cared about was taking his money. She didn't care, yeah, she's doing this thing for Linda Cruz, but she's dead now, so Linda can't, you know, uh, tisk, tisk her. Nobody's watching uh, this Deschamps Roxanne, who spells her name with an X, weird rock, R-O-C-X. So nobody knows what Roxanne Deschamps is actually doing. Linda Cruz trusted Roxanne, and Roxanne has a standoff over his gun collection, which I only heard that he had the one gun. Her trailer's in Lantana, Florida, then also says Lake Worth. So the Roxanne Deschamps took the other brother, Zachary, 17, and it, there was a rumor and I don't even really want to substantiate the rumor, but something about having him, you know, finish the job. And so people were uh, afraid of that, and they put him into the mental ward. But is that true? Right? He is the brother of it, so already the stigma is going to be put right upon him. And, you know, they've had a tough life. She does not seem to be uh, operating in their best interest, right? Just shoving them into a mental ward. I don't think that's a great idea, yeah, for society. But I think she's just doing it because she's just covering her own ass. She's getting a lawyer. She's trying to go after this $800,000. She's saying she took care of Zachary, so therefore she gets a chunk of it. Where I think the future of the world lies. But I am not going to pick out one and in advance hypothetically say, oh, yes, we would send uh, uh, troops there. I don't I'm want sorry, to send Mr. Troops President. Anyways. Sorry, your yeah. time was up. Okay. Uh, Mr. Mondale, you have described the Soviet leaders as, and I'm quoting, cynical, ruthless, and dangerous, suggesting an almost total lack of trust in them. In that case, what makes you think that the annual summit meetings with them that you've proposed will result in agreements that would satisfy the interests of this country? Because the only type of agreements to reach with the Soviet Union are the types that are specifically defined so we know exactly what they must do, subject to full verification, which means we know every day whether they're living up to it, and follow-ups wherever we find suggestions that they're violating it and the strongest possible terms. I have no illusions about the Soviet Union leadership or the nature of that state. They are a tough and a ruthless adversary, and we must be prepared to meet that challenge, and I would. Were I part... ...undergoing a psychiatric evaluation at a mental hospital in Palm Beach since Friday. So is this Zachary Cruz? Oh, no. What's Zachary Cruz going to do? Is he going to be just like his brother? So uh, Nicholas thinks that she's stealing his uh, inheritance, which it looks like that to me too. And um, Zachary Cruz, what he needs to do is he needs to emancipate himself as soon as possible. He's 17. That's nearly 18. She doesn't have their best interest in mind. She's throwing him into the mental ward. There's no... She, you know, just hold him and give him a hug and talk through him through the night. But uh, he's not blood-related to Nick. Sure, he's going to be fond of Nick, but, you know, they're not blood-related. I don't just feel like when people would talk about Zachary, Zachary was the good one. He was the, you know, Nick was the one that was weird and he was a little off, but Zachary was, he was chill. Zach was cool. And uh, we did get their attention. Mr. President, perhaps the other side of the coin, a related question, sir. Since World War II, the vital interests of the United States have always been defined by treaty commitments and by presidential proclamations. Her, her 
you know, uh, mind was at. Roxanne DeChamps hears about this horrible tragedy in Florida. Immediately she says, oh, my God, who's going to get that money? She already took $3,000 away from him, so she's going to, what, try to take all the rest of it, too. And then she's putting Zachary into it. Maybe she'll get the whole check, right? Maybe she'll be the ward and Zachary will just have to, you know, she'll have to dole out payments to Zachary for the next five years as long as Zachary does everything that she says. Now, that's, you know, she filed a petition to administer Linda's estate. She gets Linda's estate. I mean, he's the 19-year-old, so technically it would be Nick. Nick actually has the, you know, the estate. And people are right, he's going to get sued and all that money would be taken away from him. But if at least by giving it to Nick and then him getting sued, it'll go to the victims instead of going to this Roxanne DeChamps. She took care of them, you know, Zach, for, what, a couple months? How much does she think she's entitled to? Of it. If we could develop a principle that would say both sides could fire all their missiles and no one would get hurt, I suppose it's a good idea. But the fact of it is, we're so far away from research that even comes close to that, that this director of engineering research in the Defense Department said to get there, we would have to solve eight problems, each of which are more difficult than the atomic bomb and the Manhattan Project. It would cost something like a trillion dollars to test and deploy weapons. The second thing is, this all assumes that the Soviets wouldn't respond in kind, and they always do. We don't get behind, they won't get behind, and that's been the tragic story of the arms race. We have more at stake in space satellites than they do. And DeChamp, who's not answering questions, her lawyer is, Everybody's getting all these lawyers, right? And that kind of shows you, right, American society, for liability reasons, you got to just get a lawyer. Everybody's got a lawyer. So she, you know, gets a lawyer, files a petition to administer Linda's estate. She says she's caring for a 50% minor beneficiary. She's taking care of Zachary, she says, who she put in a mental ward. So technically she's not taking care of him anymore. She took care of him for, what, three months? How much does she want for that? A thousand bucks? Here's a thousand bucks. Now, get out of here. So uh, if her petition is granted, she could charge the estate a fee for settling it for the kids. I went ahead and settled your estate. Well, I didn't want you to. Why'd you do that? You know, the source said Mrs. Deschamps was the one who had Zachary involuntarily committed. So she shoves, you know, 17-year-old Zach. Whether or not he's guilty of anything, he's got an asterisk by his name. Uh-oh. If we could stop right now the testing and the deployment of these space weapons, and the president's proposals go clear beyond research. If it was just research, we wouldn't have any argument, because maybe someday somebody will think of something. But to commit this nation to a buildup of anti-satellite and space weapons at this time in their crude state would bring about an arms race that's very dangerous indeed. One final point. The most dangerous aspect of this proposal... Zachary involuntarily, he was involuntarily committed on Friday... Now, he had six months from Linda's November 1st, death, uh, November 1st death to file the petition. So six months from Linda's death, someone has to file for the estate. She's filing for it immediately. So, you know, they're just licking their chops, thinking of nothing but the money. Zachary was the good one. Zachary was always the calm, the chill, the decent, you know, nobody had any complaints where everybody had nothing but complaints with Nick. They always said in the same breath, Zachary, though, he's not like Nick at all. But hell, maybe all parents should do this, right? Just throw their children into a mental ward, stigmatize them as possibly being crazy, nuts for all eternity, put a metaphorical slice on their cheek like Scarface to serve as a reminder to the world, hey, you all, this one might be crazy too, but it's not our fault. All right, that's just good for good parenting 101 to limit liability. Is for the first time we would delegate to computers the decision as to whether to start a war. That's dead wrong. There wouldn't be time for a president to decide. It would be decided by these remote computer, computers. It might be an oil fire. It might be a jet exhaust. The computer might decide it's a missile and off we go. Why don't we stop this madness now and draw a line and keep the heavens free from war. Mr. Mondale. In this... A lot of shit that's going on here. There's a lot of moving parts. Now, Gene Kugar, right, he's pushing for gun control, so he just went on and on about this is so obvious. 
He said Nicholas Cruz was a loser. He just couldn't get any women. He couldn't stand up for himself. He was a weak little baby. He was a weak little man-child baby, right? Just going after him like uh, he's Donald Trump. He did have some, you know, he's bigoted, racist. He was drawing swastikas. He uh, was womanizing or didn't respect women. No, not Jerry Falwell, but Nick Cruz, right? So he's went on and on, and essentially Jink has blasted him, and there's some symptoms of that, but, I mean, my God, he's 19 years old. What do you expect? He didn't have a million-dollar loan, right, given to him by his father, which not everybody had, but he did actually have a million dollars in the bank, and perhaps, you know, nobody could care about his life, just be, him being himself, but he did have a million dollars in the bank. We canceled the B-1 under the previous administration. What did we get for it? Nothing. The Soviet Union has been engaged in the biggest military buildup in the history of man. At the same time that we tried the policy of unilateral disarmament. Look, what could the motive possibly be? If we could just use English language, what was the reason in his head? It was sick, demented, it's fucked up what he did, but there is a logic, uh, logical kind of thinking in his mind. And I went back and I looked at uh, the Virginia Tech shooter, and then I also looked at the 1966 Texas clock shooter, a uh, little bit of Elliot Rogers too, but mostly the, uh, the Tech shooter, because he wrote a manifesto. He said exactly why he did what he did. And then Jared Lee Loeffner too. So I want to, you know, try to figure out what the motive is. It seems like everybody wants to say that they're crazy, and it's easy to discount that Jared Lee Loeffner seemed like there might, he might have had a screw loose. Um, but they're 95% of the time, what seems like crazy behavior is communication, and this communication by Virginia Tech shooter, he hated America and American society. Of weakness, if you will. And now we are putting up a defense of our own, and I've made it very plain to them. We seek no superiority. We simply are going to provide a deterrent so that it will be too costly for them if they are nursing any ideas of aggression against us. Now, they claim they're not. The reason why this is, if we want to truly stop this kind of behavior, we've got to stop the cultural things that are, you know, yeah, limited the freedom of people would do it, but what, you know, could we have given this guy a hug? Could we have given him some decent financial advice? Could somebody have said him, he went to the American public school system and nobody at any time told him about any of this stuff? None of the legal stuff, none of the money, none of the inheritance. He had all this coming to, did he know about any of this? It seems like if you knew that you had a million dollars in the bank, you wouldn't go, you know, uh, commit atrocities. It seems like they're suicidal. Basically, there is no hope. They don't see any light at the end of the tunnel and they're sick of it and they just don't give a damn anymore. And they're driven to it, and it's, the, you know, it's either suicide or to do something heinous, which essentially is suicidal anyways. So uh, both the Virginia Tech and Jared Lee Loeffner, Elliot Rogers, they wanted American society to... ...defense that is second to none. Indeed, he was on that side virtually throughout all his years in the Senate, and he opposed even... the. President Carter, when toward the end of his term, President Carter wanted to increase the defense budget. Mr. Ma guys were bullied. Elliot Rogers was bullied, but and he was also a little guy too. James Alex Fields Jr. is being bullied. The Virginia Tech shooter, Mr. Chow, whatever his name is, he uh, he was pretty messed up, but he was very particular and very specific. It was American society. In fact, he had. A lot of names for us. He said we were hedonists and charlatans. We were a bunch of sadists and rapists and terrorists. We were apostles of sin. We were Christian Nazis, the descendants of Satan. He wanted to be the savior of the oppressed, the downtrodden, the poor, the rejected. He was Jesus. He took on the image of Jesus. And he hated the rich kids. And he hated the debauchery and the deceitful charlatans. And he talked about, you forced me into a corner and gave me only one option. You just love to crucify me. You love inducing cancer in my head, terror in my heart, and ripping my soul all the time. I mean, that's... Defense buys us a dollar's worth of defense. There's a big difference between the two of us. A president must manage that budget. I will keep us strong, but you'll not do that unless you command that budget and make certain we get the strength that we need. When you pay uh, $500 for a $5 hammer, you're not buying strength. I would ask the audience not to applaud. All it does is take up time that we would like to devote. It is very much
much a boy. He's got the mind. He's got the body. He's got the, you know, of a boy. And why? I think not just, you know, he's developmentally challenged, but I think it's also American society or American education system. It's a hierarchical system. They didn't say go, be strong, be all that you can be. They said shut up, go over there, do that homework, do this, do that. Uh, I don't care who you are. I don't care how much money you got in the bank. I don't care what you're going to just do as I say. He needs to be obedient. So uh, then when he was pushed out into real life, who's going to, he's supposed to lead his own life? Hell, you hadn't, you know, taught him to do that. So he was educated specifically American education in general by American society. Now, being 19, he didn't, wasn't a great success. You're right, Jink Ugar, but Jink Ugar, at 19, he was writing articles about how women were genetically inferior. So I'm sure Jink Ugar was a big champion, just a big, you know, getting all the women all the time when he was 19. To the debate, Mr. Kondraki, your question to Mr. Mondale. Mr. Mondale, in an address earlier this year, you said that before this country resorts to military force, and I'm quoting, American interests should be sharply defined, publicly supported, congressionally sanctioned, militarily feasible, internationally defensible. Rogers, he said that too, right? That women were genetically inferior. So Jink and Elliot Rogers, God, they're, uh, they got the same opinion, at least at 19. So, yeah, I guess he is a huge loser. But, I mean, to just be like, well, that's the reason right there. He's just this total loser. I don't believe he lives in a culture that was conducive for his success. As soon as, you know, the $3,000 was stolen from him. So his mom just died. Now he got kicked out, has no place to go, and he got $3,000 robbed from him. Did anybody say get an apartment? I guess that was like, well, no, he's the last guy I'd want to have an apartment. He's the last guy I'd want to have a car. He's the last guy I'd want to have a job. He's the last person I'd want to. So maybe that's what he needed was a little bit of responsibility to be included in the thing. So, you know, for Gene to call him a loser, also, he had a very shitty life. So, yeah, don't feel sorry for him now, but his childhood? Mondale, your rebuttal. Mr. President, I accept your commitment to peace, but I want you to accept my commitment to a strong national defense. I propose a budget. <laughs> I have proposed a budget which would increase our nation's strength by, by in real terms. You know, I don't see how anybody could actually put their themselves in the shoes of, you know, Nick Cruz. He's given up by his parents, biological parents. Where's his dad? Where's his mom? Nobody knows. She uh, gives it, you know, has the baby to term, so she cared enough to give him life, then gives it to Linda and Roger Cruz, who are probably real happy, finally got themselves a baby. Two years later, got themselves another baby. And then, uh, you know, three years after that, when he's just five years old, Roger Cruz dies of a heart attack. He watches, watches it, witnesses it. Dies of a heart attack right in front of him. So that had been traumatic, his own father. And then he has no father for the next 14, 15 years. Linda is the only one that's raising him, and she calls the cops on him 30 times, so clearly she's not able to handle him. And I don't know if she was, you know, uh, being an oppressor, if there was any corporal punishment there or not. Uh, but it's possible, right? Where else would he learn, you know, to be violent? Where else would he learn this? And perhaps... That we would have nothing to do with regard to political assassinations. Mr. Mondale, your rebuttal. What is a president charged with doing when he takes his oath of office? He raises his right hand and takes an oath of office to take care, to faithfully execute the laws of the land. A president can't know everything, but a president has to know those things that are essential to his leadership and the enforcement of our laws that your mother dies of the common flu, right, in America, the common flu, she died of the common flu, she got pneumonia after she got the flu. So the, the flu is the reason why she had died. A lot of times pneumonia is known as the old person killer. So, but that's, eh, nobody should be dying of the flu or pneumonia. Everybody should have the flu shots every year. Flu shots should be free and plentiful for, plentiful for everybody. We should have paid sick leave so sick people aren't going out and coughing on your food and coughing on the other students. So until Jink has had all that, those expenses, then, you know, you're kicked out, going from one trailer to another trailer, got three grand stolen from you. And the only thing you got, your security blanket is your AR-15. So it, what he did was sick. But it's, there's communication, and it's just like a suicide. So a suicide, we should reflect upon ourselves. What could we have done? With the president is that despite all of those differences, 
we must, as past presidents before this one have done, meet on the common ground of survival. If it had been a kinder, gentler nation, if Nick Cruz was homeless, would we have helped him out? Hey, Nick Cruz, you don't have a home. Would we have offered him to stay with us or found him a place to stay? We have a half a million Americans uh, on our streets today. If he didn't have health care, would we have got him some health care? What if he had a million dollars in the bank and just needed a little bit of legal advice and financial advice in order to, you know, get himself established? Could you have helped him out without getting your own beak wet just because it's the right thing to do? Like the good Samaritan? Not what will happen to me if I don't happen to him, but what will happen to him if he isn't helped out? So that's why these kids are doing this one-man Rambo war with all of American society. So he wanted all of American society to be punished. And that's why just random, you know, American kids were targeted. So I think, could we, is there something we could have done? Can we change? And that's where uh, the president has opposed practically every arms control agreement by every president of both political parties since the bomb went off. And he now completes this term with no progress toward arms control at all, but with a very dangerous arms race underway instead. There are now over 2,000 more warheads pointed at us today than there were when he was sworn in, and that does not strengthen us. We must be very, very realistic in the nature of that leadership, but we must grind away and talk to find ways to reducing these differences, particularly where arms races are concerned and other dangerous exercises of Soviet power.